I want to learn how to pray without ceasing. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I like it how God has all the messages prepared so we have the praises all come in on prayer this morning and that's what I'm preaching on. And I, don't, I know that Beth didn't know that. I never mentioned it. But I'm beginning a new series on prayer, and I'm not, I'm just calling it Flat Out Prayer. Um, and there's some things that God has shown me and is showing me on the subject of prayer. But let me just start off by saying that prayer is bigger. Turn and tell your neighbor and say, prayer is bigger than you think it is. Prayer is bigger than you think it is. We want to think about prayer as being when we formally get down on our knees and fold our hands and are real deliberative about our words, maybe end it with an amen. But folks, a lot of times if you're thinking and talking to God, you're praying just as much as you're in church kneeling down. Prayer is a bigger subject than most of us can wrap our heads around. And I'm not really following a particular order, at least I don't think of these messages, except to start where God showed me to start. But how many agree that they would like to pray more? Amen. Amen. And you know, a lot of people go to church to pray, and there's nothing wrong with that. You know, a lot of people associate prayer with church. But isn't it an awfully good thing that we don't have to be in church to that's, pray? That's right. Because a lot of times when we really, really, really need to pray, we're not in church, we need to pray where we are in the situation we're standing right then and there. Amen. Amen. But the Bible does say that we should not forsake gathering together and praying as a group. That's right. It says in Hebrews 10.24, let us consider one another in order to stir up good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. And what is the day approaching? Well, there's a day that's coming when Jesus comes back. And we know when we look at the world around us, that day is approaching. You know, I know that different people have different ideas about how they like to pray. Some people like to pray alone. Anybody likes to pray alone in their prayer closet in silence? Some people like to pray silently. And by the way, when I say silently, most of us are, we not, may not be speaking out loud, but you're forming the words in your head. Just the way when you read a book, you kind of... Speak the words in your mind to yourself. It's the same thing when you're praying silently. Does God hear silent prayer? Absolutely. Absolutely. As a matter of fact, before the thought forms in our head, He's already heard it, understood it. He knew it was coming. That's an awesome thing. So turn and tell your neighbor, you can't screw up prayer even if you try. <laughs> And you know, other people like to pray out loud. I'm one of those people that likes to be vocal. I like to move. I like to walk around and pray out loud. That's just me. Maybe because if you put me still too long, I'll fall asleep. I don't know. But I like to pace back and forth and pray. That's how I would pray. You know, I'm, you can't say one way is right and one way is wrong because all prayer is good. Amen. And we're going to look at that. Amen. But what we really need to understand is what is prayer? And as I started out, I submit to prayer. At least I hope you get this by the time I finish with this series. Prayer is a lot bigger than we think it is. Prayer is when we turn our thoughts and our words either out loud or silently towards God. When you think, when you're turning your mind toward Jesus and you're thinking thoughts, you're praying, folks. Amen. 
It doesn't just start like some kind of switch when your hands are folded. <laughs> when your thoughts are, are moving towards God, when you think about Him and you have thoughts in your mind or words coming out of your mouth, when you say, Oh Lord, what am I going to do now? Guess what, folks? You just prayed. You just asked the King of Creation a question. And unlike some of us husbands, when our wives tell us things we're a little hard to hear, we don't hear them, don't remember, God never, turn and tell your neighbor, God never forgets. God never, forgets. never, ever, ever, when you were a, a four-year-old and said your first, our Father who art in heaven, first time you said the Lord's Prayer, the Lord, the Lord heard it. Remembers every word. Remembers the tone of your voice. It's an awesome, awesome thing. But prayer is when we turn our thoughts and our words either out loud or silently towards God. So let's think a minute. What's required when we pray, okay? No matter how you choose to pray, where you choose to pray, certain things are required. First, prayer requires a measure of faith. Amen? Amen. Prayer requires that we have a measure of faith to turn towards God. If you don't have any faith that anyone's listening, that there is a, a God, how are you going to pray? You're just muttering words That's or right. thinking thoughts. That's right. <laughs> and secondly, prayer requires that we have a boldness or a confidence when we approach God. Okay? Now, what does that mean? It means that if you're afraid to talk to the Lord, you're going to have a hard time praying. We're going to look at these. Hebrews 11.6, we're going to hit this scripture a number of times, talks about the faith element required of those who come to God. And how else are we going to come to God except through prayer? He can go look for him out in the woods or in another city. But he's omnipresent, isn't he? He's there all the time. The way that we come to God is through prayer. Remember that. Robin talked, and it's so interesting. I know she didn't know, have any idea, I don't think, what I was preaching about. Sometimes I think I don't have any idea what I'm doing. No, I'm kidding. Not until the Lord shows me. But you know, she talked about going into the Holy of Holies. It's right in my sermon right here. How do we go into the Holy of Holies? We approach God through prayer. The veil has been rent, yes. There's no more barrier there. The only barrier is will we turn our thoughts and attention towards God and have the faith that, to believe. And we're going to look at that. Hebrews 11.6 lays it out perfectly. Absolutely perfectly. It says, without faith, it is impossible to please Him. For he who comes to God must believe what? That He is. And, boy, when you see ands in the Bible circle, it means you're getting a bonus there. And that is where are we here? must believe that He is, and that He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. Who does He reward? Those who diligently seek Him. When you turn to the Lord in prayer, what do you have to believe? You have to believe that He is. Prayer is the way that we approach God. The first thing that is required to pray is to believe that God is. What did God say to Moses in the burning bush? I am that I am. I am that I am. God says he, he says I am, so we can say he is. He exists. As a matter of fact, he said his name is I am. Why? Because he had no forefather to name him. He's eternally existent. Always was and always shall be Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We need to have the faith to believe that God exists in order to be able to pray. 
Why don't atheists pray? They don't believe he is. You know how you can tell a true atheist from a, from a hypocrite? If they're a true atheist, they don't care if you pray. They don't care. They have absolute, because they think you're just talking at the air. If God doesn't exist, why would it upset them that you're praying? You know? It doesn't bother me if you want to you want to make a noise at the heavens. But if they're a hypocrite, it bothers them. Quit talking to God. Talking to who? The one that is, was, is, and is, is to come? <laughs> they don't believe in him. They don't believe that God is. Not only do they not pray, it wouldn't matter if you pray or not. That's right. Let that be anybody who is who is says they don't believe in God, if they get to, they get upset about prayer, they get because deep down they know it's real and they're being convicted. Absolutely convicted. That's right. So we must believe that He is. And second, in addition to believing that God is, if you're going to pray, you must believe what it says in Hebrews 11, 6. Let me read that again. But well, without faith, it's impossible to please Him. For he who comes to God must believe that He is and that He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him must believe He is, and you must believe that He is a rewarder of those who seek Him. How do you seek God? Prayer. Prayer. You can't go out and look for Him someplace because He's omnipresent. He's here. He's there. He's every place. We seek God through prayer. Hallelujah. You must believe that He is, and that He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. And how do you seek Him? Prayer. Now I had somebody tell me one time, long time ago, Robin's laughing, she probably knows who it is. Not here around anymore. He says, God's just this big old guy sitting up there on a cloud, drinking a beer and laughing at us all having our problems down here. He could care less. He forgot smoking a cigarette. Smoking a cigarette, he said too, yep. I had a hard time with that, that mental picture. I said, that's, that's not the God that I know. I don't know who that is. Could be the devil. Yeah. But you know, why would you pray if you thought that God was a big old mean guy sitting up on a cloud, drinking a beer, smoking a cigarette, and laughing at everything that happens to you? You wouldn't go to God. You wouldn't seek His face. There's something a little telling about prayer. You know, the people who pray, they believe that God is. Amen. The people who pray believe that God answers prayer, that He's a rewarder of those that diligently seek Him. You know, the Bible tells us that God is good. Amen? Amen. Psalm 34, 8 says, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in Him. I have a, a red sweatshirt. And on the front of it, it has that scripture. What is it? Psalm 34, 8, 8. Taste and see that the Lord is good. And it has like a Chinese takeout thing there. One of those little box things. And it says, taste and see that the Lord is good. I got it at... Um, Kingdom Bound. Kingdom Bound. That's where it was. Hallelujah. It's nice to wear things like that because you know... Some people look at it and say nothing. A Christian will look at it and say, Amen. Psalm 145, 9 says, The Lord is good to all, and His tender mercies are over all His works. He's good to who? He's good to all. God is love. Amen. He is good to all. James 1, 17. I love this scripture. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. Amen. Every good and perfect gift comes down from a good God with whom there is no variation. You know what variation or shadow of turning means? No. Well, some days you come in smiling. 
Other days you get up growling. Anybody have days like that? Yep, basically yep. every morning. Some kids wake up with a smile on their face. Others you use a, use a long stick and you poke them because you know they're going to be snarling. But God is not the big old mean bear that you're afraid to disturb. He's going to come out and, and hit you with his claws. That's not God. God is good, amen? That's right. He is good all the time. He's a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. Folks, the foundations of prayer, especially this one here, our motivation for seeking God requires to believe that God is and that He's a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. Let me tell you something. When I'm awake, I believe that God is, is, that He exists, and that He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. I never worried about praying and saying the wrong thing with God. You know why? He knows what I'm going to say. He knows my situation. And if you say the wrong thing, God is more than able to correct you. To put you on the right path. As a matter of fact, you can be praying and fervently and praying for the wrong thing and not feel any faith really flowing into that prayer. And God will move your prayers until they line up with His will. Yes. Yeah. You might be angry with a brother or sister. I'm praying, Lord, that you get even with them. Blah, 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 blah. You know, bless the Lord, let the fleas of a thousand camels, or whatever that is. <laughs> I guarantee you, you can try praying that, and praying that, and, pray, and all of a sudden the conviction of the Holy Spirit's going to come. There may be some tears in between, but all of a sudden God's going to move you into His way of thinking. Because He makes the rain to fall, the Bible says, on the evil and on the just. And we're to be like our Heavenly Father. Hallelujah. The Bible says that God gives, and we're going to look at that in just a minute, but He gives liberally and without reproach. And that's from uh, James 1 5, we're going to read in just a minute. He gives out liberally without. What does it mean to be repro reproached? Or The King James says, upbraideth. Well, let me read that, James 1 5. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given him. If you go to God, he's going to give it to you how? Liberally and without reproach. He's not going to come in and say, how dare you disturb the great and terrible Oz? Anybody watch The Wizard of Oz? Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the Wizard of Oz is not a role model for prayer. The man behind the curtain wasn't God. And he had this scary outward voice. Who dares disturb the great and powerful Oz? Well, Oz is not great, and he's certainly not powerful. It's just a movie. But God is great and powerful. Amen. And yet, he says, Jesus said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take his yoke upon you. Learn of him. For he's meek and lowly of heart. I'm kind of paraphrasing there. Hallelujah. Matthew 7, 7 says, Ask and it will be given you. Seek and you'll find. Knock and it will be open to you. Ask, seek, and knock. It doesn't say, Get up and get away from my door. Who dares to serve my slumber? That's not God. <coughs> For everyone who asks, receives. And he who seeks, finds. And to him who knocks, it will be opened. Amen. Then it goes on to say, What man is there among you? If his son asks for bread, will give him a stone. Here, chew on this. That's not God. That's not us. We wouldn't do that. It says, or if he asks for a fish, we'll give him a scorpion. 
If, if you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask Him? Hallelujah. Folks, there is a foundation that needs to be there in prayer before you open your mouth, before you turn your attention towards God. You have to, number one, believe that He is. And you have to believe that God is good, that He rewards those who come to Him. Yep. You know, if you spanked your kid, every time they came and asked you something, how often would you see him come to you? Never. Isn't that right? We're God's children. He doesn't rebuke us for asking. He doesn't... We should, we should be anxious to go and seek the Lord. Because it says, everyone that asks what God says, no, no, it's given. Everyone that seeks, finds. Everyone that knocks, it says, it's opened to you. What an awesome, awesome thing. James 1, 5, and I'll read through 1, 8. As we read before, God doesn't rebuke us. It said, if any of you lacks wisdom, you've got a problem that you're dealing with and you need to go to God for the answer, let him ask of God who gives to all liberally and without reproach. And it will be given to him. Listen, if you're trying to pray and you got something screaming back, who do you think you are? What kind of Christian do you call yourself? That's not God, folks. That doesn't line up with His Word. If He could see who was answering, He'd have pointy horns and a tail and a pitchfork. That's not God. God is good. It says, here's the, here's the thing we've got to watch. James 1.6 Let him ask in faith. Ask in faith. Prayer is about faith. Believing He is and believing He will reward those who seek Him. Amen. Believing if you ask, it will be given. If you seek it, you'll find it. If you knock, the door will be open. That's right. <laughs> it says, let him ask in faith with no doubting. You know, <clears throat> for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. No doubting. That doesn't mean you have to conjure up some hyper faith to believe in this miracle is going to happen. What that means is, don't doubt God, who He is, and His disposition towards you, and what the Bible says. Amen. Because when you doubt, you're doubting the character and the nature of a good and loving God. Amen? Amen. Let not that man suppose he'll receive anything from the Lord. Why? Well, I've thought about this. Because if you're praying to a God of your own imagination who is not good all the time, who doesn't have your best interest at heart, who doesn't care about you or is not a God of love, that's not God. I don't know who you're praying to, but you're not going to get anything from that whatever imagination you're praying to. You have to pray to who God really is and seek His face. It says, he is double-minded, man unstable in all his ways. What is double-minded? Double-minded is, oh, God loves me, he loves me not. He loves me, he loves me not. Come on, folks. I have a praise today. And you give a praise and you walk out, God never doesn't care about me. Look at all the problems I've got. Excuse me. He's good. Whether you have problems or not. Amen? He is righteous. Whether you walk right or not. He is faithful. Whether we are faithful or not. Prayer requires faith. Not some fancy words or some clever bargaining with God. Any bargainers out there? Lord, if you do this, I'll do that. Everybody's done it. Come on, be honest. Yep. Oh, Lord, if you get me out of this jam, I'm going to go to church. I'm going to be good. And then he, God says, okay, and he lifts the problem. 
And you say, boy, I'm glad that's gone. You go back, back to doing what you were doing before. Yeah, got me in the message first. Hebrews 11.6, you're going to memorize this scripture before you're done. It says, without faith it's impossible to please him, for he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. You have to be convinced of the goodness of God. <coughs> you have to be convinced of his presence. Amen. Amen. Yeah. In my office someplace, it was an old, old sermon. I think I don't even know if half the people are here. I had a sermon I called it Boomerang Prayers. Yeah, I remember. And somebody brought me in an actual boomerang. Real wooden one. I still have it. And you know, a lot of people pray boomerang prayers. We, they throw up the prayer and they hope that they throw it in such a way that it curves around and the answer comes back and they can grab it in their hands. Yeah. It's more superstition than it is faith. It's more based on did I say it right? Did I do the right words? Etc. Etc. That's right. Folks, you can't pray wrong because God knows what you're going to say before you even say it. Amen. As a matter of fact, He knows what we need and we don't even have a clue. See, there's a part of prayer that has to be baked in to prayer people. Baked in. In other words, it's there whether you're saying anything, thinking anything, the faith to believe that He is and that His disposition is a good God who rewards those who seek Him should be with you 24 hours a day and 7 days a week. You know, those things are there. That's part of what you need to pray without ceasing, giving you a little hint before you even say anything. That should be baked into the equation for a Christian. That they have faith that God exists and they have faith that He is a good God who does not upbraid or rebuke or reproach those who come to Him. And that's an awesome, awesome thing. That's the foundation of prayer. If you don't have that foundation, folks, you're going to have a hard, hard time trying to Pray. We shouldn't fear coming to God. Prayer requires faith. That aspect of prayer is nonverbal. You're almost three quarters of the way there, folks, to be able to pray without ceasing if you're just convinced that God exists and that He rewards those who diligently seek Him. Amen. And by saying God is, folks, you don't believe that he's somewhere far off, not aware of what's going on. Folks, he's, he's present. He's here. He's wherever you are. Wow. Hallelujah. I went 100 miles one time off of a main road way up into the bush in Canada, and God was there. Powerfully. He was there. He was there before we got there. And he's still there, and he's still here. He's every place at once. As a matter of fact, repeat after me. Say, without faith, without faith, it is impossible, it is impossible to please God. To please God. God. For he who comes to God, for he who comes to God, the person who prays, person who prays must believe that God is, must believe that God is, and that He is a rewarder, and that He is a rewarder of those who seek Him, of those who seek Him. Yeah, diligently seek Him. That's right, you can't just, well, I'll take a chance that God is there. But you know what? You know how to lead an atheist to the Lord? Let me tell you a secret. If you can do it, they don't even have to have faith. They don't have to have anything. All you got to say is, well, here's what we're going to do. You don't believe there's a God, right? You just say this. You think the words are just going off in the stratosphere. You just humor me. And pray and say, God, if you're real, show me. That's all you need to say. Then get away from them. Because yeah. <laughs> God will show them. Amen? Amen? We don't have to prove that God exists. God proves that He exists. He Amen. is evident in His creation. You have to be a complete idiot 
To not open your eyes and look out at nature, at the wonder of the human body and science and the planet to know that God is holding it all together. By Him all things consist. That's right. It's an awesome, awesome thing. So prayer has a faith element that's a 24-7 element that's there all the time. But you know, there are people that don't really believe that God is or they believe maybe He is, but He's not a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. They're afraid to pray. Do you know people who are afraid of prayer? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I know there's some people in this town because we put up signs, God wants to meet you. We had like 1,100 signs or 14. It was a lot of signs. Put all around the county and some went down the state. And as fast as we were putting them up, some people, it was bothering them. And they were taking them down. Because they didn't, it bothered them. God wants to meet you. It was like they were terrified. They'd go out at night and pull them out of people's yards and put them in. How do I know this? Because somebody actually confessed they were doing that to me. Confessed they were doing that and told me about it. Yeah, they take them out because God wants to meet you. They don't think that God is good. They'd rather not talk to Him. They'd rather not deal with Him. Why do people say, I try everything else, I might as well pray? Because they'd rather do just about anything than stir up that big old mean bear that'll come out of his den and might cause him some problems because they're not living perfectly. Not that God didn't know before. Hallelujah. Think about the natural man. Think about Adam and Eve. All of a sudden when they got the knowledge of good and evil, they started to think like the world thinks today. What did they do? They ran and hid. God's looking for them. He knew where they were, of course, but He's looking for them walking in the garden. Where are you? What you hiding behind the bushes for? People hide from God, folks, because they don't want to seek His face. It's a scary proposition for those who aren't sure that God is or that He's a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him to, to deal with God. Remember Moses in the Old Testament? He would, he would talk to the Lord. He, he wore a veil over his face. Why? Because he had such a glow from being in God's presence. Well, what did the people say? Oh, let us come along and talk to God too? No, we don't want to talk to God. Moses, we'll stay way, 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 way far back. You just tell us what he says. You deal with that God. We're not going near him. Many people today are just like the Israelites were with Moses. They're not sure about God's disposition towards them. They would rather not rile up God or gain His attention. You see, in addition to faith, you know what else prayer requires? Boldness. Boldness. Yep. Jesus said, suffer the little children to come to me. Unless someone comes as a little child. How do little children come? Do they say, excuse me? Are they very... They just run up, don't they? Yeah. I had Bella run up to me at the altar today. She's so adorable. <laughs> Kids are adorable. But they don't, they're not stuck on formality. When they want something, you know about it because they'll run up and tell you. Isn't that right? <laughs> Prayer requires boldness. The Bible says we need to go boldly to God. We don't ring a doorbell in prayer, ding dong, and wait for God to answer and say, Lord, I know it's busy. It's, it's on a Sunday. It's right before you're getting ready to watch the Super Bowl. I don't want to bother you with this, but we don't come to God and say, Oh, Lord, uh, you know, uh, I haven't been to church or I haven't been the best person, but I really need to know. We just run boldly to the Lord. Amen? That's right. Yep. 
Has anybody ever prayed and God really told them, I'm too busy right now, come back later? Hebrews 10.19 says, Therefore, having boldness to enter the, the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way he consecrated for us through the veil that is his flesh. And that was cool that Robin talked about the veil in the temple. And having a high priest over the heart of the house of God. It says, let us draw near, how? With a true heart in full assurance of faith. What does prayer require? It requires that you have the assurance that 24-7, you can turn to God anytime. It doesn't matter. He doesn't sleep or slumber. We sleep or slumber. You call me up at 3 o'clock in the morning. I'm hoping it's not for something that's kind of important, you know, to say, hey, Pastor, I just called you up to visit. Oh, the one that thought God was a big old guy sitting on a cloud, drinking a beer and smoking a cigarette, he used to call at 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock in the morning, drunk. Never ask him if he thought he was having a beer with God during that period. A true heart with full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an eased evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. How are our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience? It works like this, folks. It works because I can go to prayer 24-7 because the blood of Jesus has washed away my sins. That's right. Past, present, and future. If I've done something that I don't feel right about, the Bible says if we confess our sins, He's faithful and just. First John, what is it, 1, 7 through 9? To cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. Hallelujah. The boldness, the full assurance of faith is there 24-7. It should be there. Again, it's there, folks, all the time. There's nothing stopping the ability to pray without ceasing, which is the title of this message, either in the faith realm or in the boldness realm. If you've got faith and you've got boldness, you can pray anytime. First Thessalonians 5.16 says, Rejoice always. Verse 17 says, Pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. You know, i got to tell you a story. There's a precious friend of mine that went home to be with Jesus. I could use his name. He'd be blessed. He's in heaven with the Lord right now. Donald Boyce. Good man of God. Some, some know him. I love him dearly. And you know, he was kind of a joy to talk to because Don had his own perspective on stuff. And he'd flat out tell you what he thought. And there was a time period when the two of us were in a church together. Back then I was an associate pastor. And there was a lot of intercessory prayer going on at the altar. Intercessory prayer, all prayer is good. Intercessory prayer is a little different. Because people are on their knees and they're crying. And guess a lot of times they've got tears running down their face and they're crying and moaning before God, either in and the earthly languages crying out for lost souls. It was adults and kids, early morning prayer time, and there'd be people, and again, I like to pray walking around, so I'd be walking around praying in the Spirit. That's just my style. I guess I'm not an intercessor, okay? And some of the people that were intercessors were talking to Don, and you know, there's no wrong way to pray. But they just, Don, you need to get down and be an intercessor. And he would pray at the altar. And he took me aside. He said, Scott, I don't know. He said, I pray differently than those people here. I said, well, Don, there's no wrong way to pray. He says, no. He says, but you know, I pray all the time. He says, I get up in the morning. I put my feet on the floor. And I say, what are we going to do today, Jesus? I get in the car. I'm driving down the road and I see something and I say, Lord, what do you think about that? He says, I just talked to God. My prayers aren't fancy. 
I just talk to God all day long. Amen. Amen. What a friend we have in Jesus. He says, you know, sometimes I, I have prayed and cried out for God, but, but I don't just pray at the altar. I mean, God's with me all day long. Doesn't matter. 24-7. And you know, I, I started to think about what he said. And it, it did make a lot of sense. I still believe in intercessory prayer. It's powerful. I believe that, that two or more are gathered in his name. Whatever they ask will be done. There's power in praying together. But the Bible says to pray without ceasing. How do you pray without ceasing? Man, if you're just saying the Lord's Prayer and, and, and speaking like that, and I, you'd be exhausted the way most people think about prayer to pray without ceasing. But Donald wasn't exhausted. He wasn't tired. It was an easy thing because he just talked to God. And God would talk to him. What are we going to do today, Lord? The Lord would give him thoughts on things he needed to do. Let's go, Jesus. They get in the vehicle and they go. They do. And he was involved in all kinds of things. It was an easy thing. He was praying without ceasing. When Paul said, pray without ceasing. What did he mean? At least I think it was Paul, 1 Thessalonians. Could have been. But you know, we are to pray without ceasing. You see, what's required to pray without ceasing? Well, first of all, we have to have faith, okay? Faith to believe that God is. Faith to believe that He's a rewarder of those that diligently seek Him. Faith to go boldly to the throne of God because we know we are the children of God, that God is love, that He has called us with His own tender mercies. We have to have faith. But we also, to pray without ceasing, here's the secret, here's the answer. We have to be willing to be in fellowship with the Lord. Hallelujah. We have to be willing to turn our thoughts and hearts towards Jesus. We have to be willing to just walk and be aware of His abiding presence with us, in us. Every step we take, Every word we speak, every breath we breathe in of life and breathe out, the Lord God is with us. Jesus said, I will never leave you or forsake you. Amen. Our God is called Jehovah Shammah. He is present. He is, he is here. He is now. He is active. He's not some God afar off. We have constant and unbroken fellowship with the Lord by the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Folks, you can't run away from God and you can't run to God because we are the temple of the living God. Amen? Hallelujah. Amen. Whether we're awake or asleep. You know, it says, pray without ceasing. What about when I go to sleep? Well, let me tell you something about the Holy Spirit that lives in us. He never stops praying. He never stops making intercession. Jesus, it says, He ever lives to intercede for the saints. What an awesome, awesome thing. How do you pray without ceasing? Well, first, the 90% is all baked in. Faith to believe He is. Faith to believe that God is good and He is a rewarder. Faith to go boldly based on that to the throne of grace. Those are all baked in. The last element of praying without ceasing is deciding to live and walk in fellowship with the Lord. Let's all stand. Hallelujah. 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 Just, just uh, lift a hand up towards the Lord. I invite you to pray with me. Just say, 